Hey streamers, this is Vibe. It's an all-in-one event doc for all your live streaming notification. It works for Twitch, Kick, and YouTube, and it can be used on any streaming software like OBS Studio, Streamlabs Desktop, and Meld Studio. It's fully customizable and works seamlessly with both Stream Elements and Streamlabs. And on Streamlabs, you can even mix and match all of your favorite alerts in one simple place. In this video, I'm gonna walk you through all the custom options that Vibe has to offer. Let's get right into it. All right, so if you're ready to get started or you just have a couple more questions, head on over to nerderdie.com and you can check out the Vibe event doc. Uh, we have all these images of the customizations you can make, the changes to the colors and things like that, and a couple of videos kind of showing everything off. But before we get started and actually setting things up, I just wanna clarify uh, two quick things. First is the compatibility. So with this widget, it does work for Twitch, YouTube, and Kick, and it works for any streaming software. We just listed a couple of the most popular ones like OBS Studio, Streamlabs Desktop, and Meld Studio. Basically anything with the browser source, this should work with. Then for widget services like Streamlabs and Stream Elements, it does work for both. The only thing is that Streamlabs fully supports multi-stream widgets, meaning you can have different things like with Twitch and Kick and YouTube all in one widget. But with Stream Elements, you can only use one platform right now. The reason for this is Stream Elements kind of has everything kind of divided out. So it isn't easy for newer streamers to set this up uh, in a way that we think is easy enough for them to do it the first time. But if they do make it easier, we will update it and we will add it to a patch in the near future. The next thing that I wanna cover just real quick, and most of you should already have this done, so you probably don't need to worry about this, but if you do get some kind of stuttering or laggy effects or something like that, you wanna make sure that you have hardware acceleration enabled for both Chrome and in OBS Studio. Essentially, hardware acceleration lets you use your GPU to help render some things and process it. And basically, if you're worried about performance or anything like that, this is generally gonna help because essentially, if you don't have it enabled, your CPU is gonna try to render this thing and it's very bad at doing that. So it will actually hurt your performance if you don't have this enabled and it will look pretty bad. So we have a blog article over here that we'll link in the description below. Check that out if you have any issues um, before you actually reach out to us because most of the time we found that this is the answer to those problems. So let's go ahead and get started setting this thing up. Setting this up couldn't be easier. Just go ahead and grab the download. And once you have the download, you wanna just unzip it. So I'm gonna right click and extract all, and then just go ahead into that folder. Inside of it, you have a couple other folders. So you have the get started here and the support links. Inside the get started here is just a couple of setup guides. Uh, this will guide you through both Stream Elements and Stream Labs installation and setup and it will have updated information that maybe this video doesn't have. So check that if you buy this at a later date. Then also we have some support links here, which also has the setup guides, um, but there are some things like you can go ahead and reach out to us via email, or you can hop into our Discord. I highly recommend these two options if you have any questions. You can follow us on X for some updates and stuff like that, but we don't fully offer support really with X. So if you wanna reach out with any issues, just contact us there first. All that you need to do is go inside of the extracted folder, and then I'm gonna set up both Stream Elements and Stream Labs, um, but depending on what platform you use, you wanna do this just slightly differently. Um, so essentially in Stream Elements, all we need to do is just pick which platform we're using. So I'm gonna double click Twitch and it's just gonna automatically import it. And then from here, we can click uh, edit and then it will load right in and you can click the uh, widget itself and go to the settings to find all the custom fields that you can use to customize it. Now in Streamlabs, these fields are pretty much exactly the same. The only difference here is that you wanna go up here and copy this URL, and you're gonna add that into the browser source of OBS, which I'll cover here in just a second. If you're a Streamlab user, or you wanna just go ahead and use the multi-stream feature, go ahead into the Streamlabs folder and just double click the link here. That will get everything loaded in. And you can add this to any widget theme that you currently have. I believe this will overwrite your event list. So I always recommend just creating a new theme um, if you need to, because that way you can keep things separated and just set up however you like. But it's really up to you how you organize all that. Anyways, if you need to, just click the Create button to create a new theme. But I'm just going to import everything right here to this Vibe theme here. 
And once you click that, you're pretty much good to go. On Streamlabs, all that you need to do is click copy right here. And then inside of your streaming platform of choice, just add in any browser source, call it what you want, and then paste this in. And then if you add it in and it gets cut off, you're gonna wanna go back into the settings of the browser source by double clicking and then set the width to something like 1920 by 1080 is usually what I set mine to, but it's up to you where you kind of hit that. And then we can even go in here and just test things really quick. So I'm gonna send through a follow and then just go back to the OBS thing and we'll see the follower alert is right there. With the side-by-side -side view, I can show off all the custom features that this widget has to offer. And again, this is gonna be the same for Streamlabs and Stream Elements. So if you're using either or, you can follow this part of the video. And you'll see here in the preview area of Streamlabs, it doesn't quite look right. And I mentioned that this might happen. So if I even sent through a test here, you'll see that it doesn't show the animation here in the preview area, but it does in OBS Studio. This is just an issue with the preview area of Streamlabs and the newer technology that we use. So if you see this, don't be too worried. If you wanna double check that you're doing everything right, go into the settings of OBS Studio. And this does apply for Stream Elements as well. Um, check the advanced area and scroll down and just make sure that you have this option checked for the sources area with enabling uh, browser source hardware acceleration. That will use your GPU to render all the shadows and stuff that need to be done and make this run smooth. And again, this won't hurt your gaming performance whatsoever. It might have a very, very minimal impact, if anything. So make sure that's done and you'll be good to go. All right, so in the side-by-side -side view here, I'm gonna show off all the custom options. Um, basically, like I said, these kind of default ones, these won't do anything really. What you wanna find is the custom fields. And again, this is going to work for both Streamlabs and Stream Elements. These options are near identical. In Streamlabs, the only advantage is that you get the extra YouTube and Kick um, built into one widget, whereas in Stream um, Elements, you only have options for one platform itself. So depending on how you like to stream, I recommend using one or the other or whatever one you'd like. Um, so we have all these different options here in the custom fields like visible platform events, base styles, the event colors, and sound options. Um, for you that wanna just change the sound right away and get going, all you need to do is either you know drop the volume down to zero or change out a sound that you like and you'll be just ready to go right away. But let's talk about these other three sections in a bit more detail that way we can kind of cover all the options that this widget has to offer. For the visible platform events, what we wanna do is just go ahead and enable and disable each of the platforms or the notification types that we wanna see within Vibe. So you can see here, I already have one disabled. I disabled the um, bit alerts that is normally on by default. If I wanted to, I could um, set that back to show. And then we could also do something like enable the kick um, sub alerts and enable YouTube member alerts as well. And when I hit save settings, it will automatically update the widget here and add in those sections. Moving on to the base styles, we'll see here that we have the flip X option. And if we set this to true and hit save settings, basically the events are gonna come out towards the left rather than towards the right. So if you wanna put this on the other side of your screen, for example, you can just kind of um, use that option to decide where it goes. And then from there, we have fade out delay in seconds and fade to opacity. I believe this is set to 10 by default, but I was kind of playing around with it a little earlier. So I'm gonna set this to 50. And what this means is, is when this option is set to zero, it's never gonna fade out. But if we just kind of ticked it over to let's say six, after six seconds, it's gonna set the widget to a 50% opacity of the inactivity. So essentially um, after the six seconds where nothing happens, it's just gonna fade out. And we have a nice cleaner widget where if you wanna show off more of your gameplay or something like that, you can do so right here. Now I'm gonna set this back to zero so that we can always see it. And then I'm gonna talk about the border radius as well. Essentially these borders have a nice roundedness to them. Basically the higher this number is, the more round they'll become. Um, so if we set this to something like zero, for example, um, you'll see that after it reloads, we have squared off corners. And then if we want just a little bit of um, kind of rounded quarters, we can set that up to 10 and just get that little look here that looks a little bit different and fits different um, overlays a little bit better. Then of course we have the base colors here. Now I'm not gonna be too daring and try to set these up um, too crazily. 
So I'll just do something crazy, like set it to white and um, I don't know, maybe like an orangish, something like that, just to kind of show you how this works. They have base color one and two where the white kind of starts on the, the right side here. So that's one. And then the orange goes to um, two. And then you even have um, the color opacity here for it as well. I'm going to just set this back because I can't even stand looking at that. Um, if you want it to be more of a flat color, you can also set the base color to the same exact hex code, and that will give it the flatness that you're kind of looking for. And then you even have stuff like a shadow opacity, which um, you don't really see now, but if you have a background, you will see um, the shadow here and the shadow color um, as well that you can customize. Then from here, you can get um, pretty creative. So if you want to um, set your tip colors or your all your event colors to different um, colors, you can do so here. So let's just pick like a bright orange again, because I think orange does actually look pretty good with blue. And then I'm going to just go ahead and let's do um, let's set the kick subscriber one to the orange as well. And the Twitch, um, let's do subscriber color to orange. And you'll just see here that essentially the um, update happens to the icons themselves as well as when you actually test um, these ones. So this one stays pink because that's that type of um, option here. And then this one will use the orange for the text. So it automatically updates those colors for you as you need. And so if you have like one simple color or palette you wanna go for, you can set it here. Or if you wanna get crazy and make all the colors different, um, you can do the same. So I'm just control C, control V for the colors that I wanted and hitting save settings and we're good to go. So that's all the customization that this has to offer. And honestly, with the customization here, you can make some pretty interesting looking widgets. I went really basic on how I set this up. So we're really curious to see what you guys set up. If you have any cool clips while using this or anything like that, um, send them on over to Nerd or Die. Um, something that I like is doing like the um, white and black kind of look. I'm a very minimal type of designer um, when it comes to that. Uh, so it's always cool to see what people come up with with our designs and customization. Anyways, I've been Derek with Nerd or Die. I appreciate you guys stopping by and checking out this widget. We hope you love it and we'll be making some really cool ones in the future. So make sure to subscribe and leave a comment down below for anything else you'd like to see. All right, see ya.